All right, so today we just want to look at um, how we're going to transform from one form an equation to another. Because sometimes the easiest equation to get is not the one that we necessarily want. Okay, so I'm going to do it just with a couple of informational problems. You can apply the same thing, obviously, to equations once you have it from a word problem. Okay, so none of the types of questions will be different here. The only thing that will be different is that we're going to be looking at different forms. Okay, so let's start with write an equation for a line with a slope of negative 3 passing through the point 3 comma negative 5. Now up to this point we have two types of equations that we use. We've got slope intercept which of course is y equals mx plus b and we have point slope which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. All right, now out of those two, which will be easier to do here? Well, hopefully you said, well, I've got the slope and I've got a point, therefore point slope will be the easiest. Can you do slope intercept? Well, yeah, of course, sure, but the point slope will be easier. So let's start with that. So we'll go y minus y1, so that's the y value from our point, which is negative 5, equals m, which is negative 3, times x minus x1, which is the x value there. Now notice that I put the minuses down. I always remember to put those down, and then I substitute the values as necessary. Um, and so from here, we can write our final equation, which should be y plus 5 equals negative 3 times x minus 3. All right? Now, assume that at this point, the question now said, rewrite this equation in slope-intercept and standard forms. Now, I know you don't know what standard form is yet. We'll get to that. But right now, we are rewriting the equation in slope-intercept form. All right, so let's take the equation that we had, which was y plus 5 equals negative 3 times x minus 3. Now, this is one of the reasons why we did the literal equations in the last chapter, solving for a variable when we can't actually solve for it. And so to get it in slope-intercept form, obviously we need y by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative 3. So I'm going to have y plus 5 equals negative 3x plus 9. All right, and then to get y by itself, I need to get rid of this 5. So I'm going to move the 5 by subtracting 5. I subtract 5 from each side. I've got y equals negative 3x plus 4. So this is now slope-intercept. All right, so I'm going to do this quickly because obviously I'm just about out of battery. So now we want to turn it into standard form. Now, standard form we haven't learned yet, but this is what it looks like. Standard form. There's really not a lot of purpose to this other than the fact that it has all the variables on the same side. Ax plus by equals c. And so what that means is that a, b, and c are integers, and a is positive. Okay, so we may have to do some multiplication to get rid of fractions. We may have to do some multiplying by a negative to make this become a positive number. But we'll look at it when it comes. So you'll notice that the x and y are both on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to take my slope intercept, which was y equals negative 3x plus 4. And we're going to put the x and y on the same side of the equation, on the left side preferably. So we'll add the 3x to move it over to the left side. And you notice that when we do that, we end up with 3x plus y. Now, I know some of you think, but Mr. Bowery, it was a y plus 3x. Yes, but addition can be done in any order, can't it? That is the commutative and associative properties of addition, that you can do it in any order. You can rearrange it, move things around however you want. This is technically the commutative property. Then instead of y plus 3x, we've got 3x plus y, and that's completely OK. Please notice that a, the number in front of the x, 1, the number in front of the y, and then the number on the other side, the c, are all integers, meaning not fractions or decimals. Okay. We also note that a is positive, therefore this is standard form. All right. Let's go ahead and look at another one, just so that we have another example to work with and, and something a little bit different. 
All right, so we're going to go down, down, down. And so we are writing an equation for the line passing through the point 2, comma, negative 3, which has a y-intercept of negative 2. So you could start with either a uh, slope-intercept or point-slope. Either way, we're going to need a, uh, a slope, right? So to get a slope, we've got a point here. We've got a y-intercept, which, of course, the y-intercept is when x equals 0. And so therefore, I've got 0, comma, negative 2. So between these two points, I should be able to get a slope. So slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so then I can put in, uh, it doesn't really matter, let's make this point 1 and this point 2. So I'm going to go negative 2 minus negative 3. Note that I put in the minus, I substitute the negative 3, I'm not doing any shortcuts here. Then I'm going to go x2, which is 0, minus x1, which is 2. So we simplify that, negative 2 minus negative 3, that's the same thing as negative 2 plus 3, which is 1, over 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. So my slope is negative 1 half. Yes, I know, I know. So if we have negative 1 half for our slope, we can now put into the equation, so it doesn't really matter which one. I got a point there, so why not y minus y1 equals x, uh, sorry, m. And we know what m is. m is negative 1 half times x minus x1, which was 2. All right, so there's our point slope. Now we can rearrange it, because again, whoop, rewrite the equation in slope, intercept, and standard forms. So let's go ahead, and we're going to make this a y plus 3, because minus the negative. I'll go ahead and distribute this at the same time. Oh my goodness, Mr. Bowater doing two things at once. And obviously, Mr. Bowater can't. So 1 half x, negative 1 half times negative 2. That's 2 over 1, which makes it negative times negative is positive. 2 over 2 is 1. All right, so from here we subtract the 3. We go minus 3. And then we have y equals negative 1 half x minus 2. All right, so from here, this is slope intercept. And now the last one that we need is standard. Now remember, standard is ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are integers. So one thing that I need to do is get the x's and y's all the same size. So I'm going to add the 1 half x. And remember, I can do this in any order. So I'm going to go 1 half x plus the y equals negative 2. Now, again, a, b, and c all have to be integers, whole numbers, no fractions or decimals. So how do I get rid of the 1 half? I multiply everything by 2. Now, if I multiply everything by 2, that will become 2 over 2x, which is 1x. The 2 needs to be distributed to the y, because this is just distribution, plus 2y. And don't forget the other side. If you do it to one side, you've got to do it to the other side. So multiply this side by 2 as well, and that will give us a negative 4. Now, at this point, a is 1, b is 2, and c is negative 4. Therefore, it's in this format. We also note that A is positive, and so therefore this is standard form. Now, if this was a negative X, we could simplify that just by multiplying everything by a negative, and that would change this to positive. The number in front of the Y can be positive or negative. The C obviously can be positive or negative as well. There will be many situations, for example, this one, where it's impossible for everything to be positive. And so it's OK. A is the only one that absolutely must be positive. The others, it's OK if they're negative, as long as they are integers, not fractions or decimals. All right, so that's your assignment for tonight. And hopefully, you'll be able to apply this in the morning. Ciao.